On July 1st, 2012, Italy and Spain were to face off in the European Cup Final, and the stakes could not have been any higher. Spain were looking to go back to back as champions, while Italy were looking to redeem themselves from 2000. And little did any football fan know that history was to be made in this match one way or another. But before I cover what really happened, we need to set the stage. Italy's road to the final was one of hardship and close calls. Italy were placed in Group C along with Croatia, the Republic of Ireland, and the other finalists, Spain. Their first fixture came against Spain, of course, and we saw lots of chances from both sides. But Antonio Di Natale gave Italy the lead at the hour mark. However, Spain midfielder Cesc Fabregas equalized just four minutes later. Both teams had difficulty finding one more goal to give them the lead, and the match concluded with a 1-1 draw. Both teams were taking home a very beneficial point. Afterwards came Croatia. You have to remember in 2012, Croatia was not as big of a footballing nation. They had a handful of stars like Rakitic, Modric, and Mandzukic, but those players were still quite young, so they had not grown into their full potential at this point. Italy were dominating them in the first half, and had several chances to score, but Italy could not convert one to save their lives. However, when Ivan Rakitic had a bad challenge against Mario Balotelli around 20 yards out, Perlo stepped up to take it, and he whipped it into left side of goal to break the deadlock just before half time. Even though Croatia were being dominated the entire match, they managed to find a cross which landed at the feet of Mandzukic where he would smash it into the roof of the goal to tie the game. Italy had their second draw in two matches, and it came down to the last match they get to the Republic of Ireland to decide whether they'd be qualifying for the knockouts. Luckily, the Italians were fortunate enough to find the goal early in the 35th minute with Cassano scoring from Perlo's corner kick, which wasn't cleared well enough. Both teams had their opportunity to score, and when it seemed like Ireland might be able to equalize, they could not make it happen. And if with the nail in the coffin and the last kick of the ball, Mario Balotelli smashed home a volley to cement Italy's spot in the knockouts. The next match went to the quarterfinals, and they had to face England. This match was going to be tough for Italy, and it was really a matter of who would be able to score their chances more effectively. Both sides were dominant and had possession in the first half. Italian players such as midfielders Riccardo Montalovo, Perlo, Balotelli, and Cassano had chances to score, but failed to do so. England players also rounded off chances through strikers Wayne Rooney and Danny Welbeck. Midfielders like Steven Gerrard and Scott Parker and defenders Glenn Johnson and Asher Cole had their chances as well. But again, none of them made it into the back of the net. In the second half, Italy proved to be more dominant, retaining possession more, and creating more chances, but they still could not score a goal. And the match was taken into extra time. Diamanti had the best chance to score in the first half of it, the ball hitting the outside of the left post. Besides that though, neither team had any more clear-cut chances. And eventually the match headed into a penalty shootout. Italy narrowly defeated favorites England and moved on to the semi-final where they would face Germany. Italy dominated possession early and after receiving the ball from Cassano, Balotelli opened the scoring in the 20th minute, finishing in the left corner heading it past Manuel Neuer. 16 minutes later, Balotelli struck again, this time striking into the top right corner on a 1-on-1 -on -one with Neuer, assisted by Montalvio, who lobbed it over the German defense. In the second half, Germany improved and were awarded a penalty in the 90th minute, where Bals already handballed it. Mesut Ozil stepped up and slotted away to cut the deficit in half. However, Italy were too strong and held off the Germans to make it to the final. Spain's road to the final was debatably a lot harder. Spain started the group stage play against Italy, of course, and they drew. However, the difference was made when they played against the Republic of Ireland and Croatia. First, they faced Ireland early into the match. Fernando Torres weaved his way around the defense and gave Spain the lead. In the 49th minute, after Ireland's goalkeeper had blocked a shot, David Silva collected the rebound and extended the Spanish lead, after not making three defenders. With 20 minutes remaining, Torres scored his second goal, taking the pass from Silva and chipping the ball over. Fabregas would go on to score the final goal after receiving a silver corner, and somehow getting it past the goalkeeper from this difficult angle. Ending the match 4-0, and giving Ireland no hopes of making it out of the group. While qualification for the quarterfinals was not guaranteed, it was still likely Spain were going to top the group. But that did not mean they could take it easy against Croatia. From kickoff, Croatia were being incredibly difficult. They were creating several opportunities to score, with Stranich and Parasic having the best ones, but Iker Casillas was a brick wall. The match was looked to be heading for a draw, until the 88th minute, when sub 2 Jesus Navas struck the winning goal from an Iniesta assist, and the Spanish were into the quarterfinals, where they would have to face Giants France. However, they were in the midst of a transition period. The match started out quite close, but in the 19th minute, Spain opened with Jordi Alba whipping in a pinpoint cross to an arm mark Zebi Alonso, who was able to head it past Hugo Lloris. From there, their momentum shifted and Spain were on the forefront. The win was completed late into the second half when French defender Anthony Revelay, I don't know how to say his name, it was this guy, who brought down Pedro in the box and Xabi Alonso converted the penalty to take Spain past France 2-0, as they move into their semi-final match where they would have to face a really strong Portugal side. From the get-go, Portugal targeted Spain's Tiki Taka playstyle and used a high press which was working well for them. Portugal got many chances to score and it looked like Spain's Euro campaign might be coming to an end. However, they were able to hold on thanks to the defensive expertise of Pique and Sergio Ramos combined with the goalkeeping experience of Iker Casillas. 
As the match headed into extra time, Spain were able to get some of their footing back, and were making a push back at Portugal. Spain were finding themselves with lots of opportunities, but just like Portugal, they failed to score any goals at all. It would all happen to come down to another dramatic penalty shootout. When it came up to the final, the atmosphere ahead of it was absolutely crazy. The odds were in favor of Spain due to the form of Italy leading into the final, however by no means were they doubted. Italy still possessed some of the strongest attacking threats in world football at the peak of Serie A's dominant era, so anything was on the table. Italian media was hyping up their national team, and Antonio Cassano gave his thoughts ahead of the match saying, We are not scared of Spain, we respect them, but we also know what we can do on the pitch. It will be a tough game, but we're ready. But again, Spanish media had no doubts they are going to win, as always. And again, they were starting to flourish some of the best young talent in the world. The starting 11 for Espana looked like this. In a 4-3-3 system, they had Iker Casillas in goal, Gerard Pique and Sergio Ramos at center back, the fullbacks were Jordi Alba and Alvaro Abeloa, the defensive midfielder was Sergio Busquets, the center mids were going to be Xabi Alonso and Xavi, with Iniesta at the left wing, David Silva at the right wing, and Cesc Fabras at striker playing as a false nine. Italy went for a bit of a different setup, playing a 4-1-3-2, with Gianluigi Buffon in goal, Ignazio Abat and Giorgio Tinalini at fullback, Andrea Barzagli and Leonardo Bonucci at center back, Andre Perlo as the holding midfielder, Claudio Marchizio, Ricardo Montalivo, and Daniel De Rossi as the attacking midfielders, and up top was Antonio Cassano and Mario Balotelli. And then came the big game. The match kicked off, Spain in the red shirts and Italy in blue. The first attack of the game was Italy's, and the ball was good to the top of the box where Perlo picked it up, and his effort went high and wide. The match was back and forth, and either team were able to break down the opposition's defense and create any clear-cut chances. Spain had a few opportunities in the first half, with Sergio Ramos narrowly missing a header over the bar, and Xavi sailing one into Rosette. However, things took a turn in the 14th minute, when Iniesta played a through ball to Fabregas, who drove it past Chiellini to the byline, before pulling back across for David Silva to hit it into the net from a 6 yard box. It was 1-0 and you could really feel the atmosphere in the stadium change, and the Italian fans started to get worried. Italy made a few desperate attacks to level the score, however none of them had worked out. 24 minutes after the first goal, Spain had doubled their lead. After a period of passing around their defense, Casillas sent a long ball which was eventually picked up by Xavi. He then passed to Alba who kept a long forward run with a left footed finish past Buffon. After this goal, Italy were left in full panic mode and realities really started to set in for them on what their chances to win were really like. When Italy came out into the second half, they were electrified. Straight away, Di Natale came out at half and was close to scoring Italy's first goal, heading across from a bot just over the crossbar. But don't think this close call stopped Spain's momentum for even a second. Minutes later, Fabregas followed up with a belter that went narrowly wide. Then again, Fabregas crossed into the penalty area after skinning Balzaretti on the right-hand side, leading to a huge scramble in front of goal, which Italy were lucky enough to clear. Spain were getting closer and closer to scoring their third goal, and it was only a matter of time. Di Natale had a second effort, striking a shot from 12 yards and forcing a save on the unrushing Casillas, almost cutting Italy's deficit in half. There was a shift in the momentum of the match from then on, and Italy started to pile on the pressure. And then Balotelli hit a shot which went over the crossbar just by an inch. However, there was a turning point when Thiago Mata then suffered a hamstring injury only 4 minutes after coming on the pitch. Italy had used all their substitutes at this point, which meant Italy had to play the last 30 minutes of the match with 10 men. And this basically ended it for them. Because as Fernando Torres replaced Fabregas with 15 minutes left to play, he went on to score in the 84th minute and was assisted by Xavi. This goal made him the first man to score in two European Championship Finals and essentially cemented the win for Spain against his 10-man Italy. Four minutes later, Fernando Torres was on the other end of Spain's last goal, providing an assist for Juan Mata to put the nail in the coffin and finish the match 4-0, against what was claimed to be one of the better teams in Italian history. This championship left Spain the first team to win two consecutive Euros Finals and the first team to win three major international tournaments. This win was the greatest margin of victory for the Spanish national team in the history of the Euros, and many journalists said that this team was the best of all time.